Hi guys, this is Jason Zack from Nathaniel School of Music. Now here's probably the most or top five most asked question I ever get as a teacher and YouTuber in the comments. It is, do we really need chord inversions? Why should we spend so much time learning them? Is it going to help? Is it going to enhance the sound? And so on and so forth. And will it work in the long run, more importantly? Because it seems to be a concept which students learn after perhaps a semester on the piano or after some time. And I would imagine it's the same with guitar players and other instruments which play polyphonic music in the sense chords so on these instruments we we are given a shape we are given a specific shape on a guitar you'll have a default c major shape or a bar chord but then is it worth exploring different shapes of the same chord becomes a very important question so i'm going to explain this from a piano perspective but i'm sure you'll understand and get the idea that it could apply to pretty much all the polyphonic instruments out there including instruments which are not really instruments the digital world of polyphonic synthesizers if you will so even when you're arranging or producing music or programming it as some people use that term you would need these concepts for sure in other words this whole video will be on the debate whether just the root position of a chord c major is this enough for me to get started is it good enough do i need to invest the time and effort to then learn the c major with with its inversions the first inversion and the second inversion, is that of value? Is it important? Well, let's see in this lesson. And before we get started, it'll be nice if you can get my handwritten notes on Patreon. And you'll also get notation, you'll also get MIDI tracks and backing tracks wherever applicable. And there are lots of other perks. As you become a patron, you'll get to interact with me, you'll get to do workshops. And before we get started, it'll be awesome if you can consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on the bell icon for regular notifications. Let's get cracking. So the first reason why you would need to use chord inversions and why you should start with chord inversions as an absolute complete beginner to chords is so that you can make it easy for yourself. Now isn't that important right? Now a lot of the times we are taught a C major chord in that notated fashion. It's so easy to read. Tum, tum, tum. It's just linear. Line, line, line or space. F, F, A, C, tum, 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 space, space, space. So it's visually easy but imagine if you have to shift from C major in the root position and then F major in its root position. You need your eyes for that, for sure, don't you think? Even I can't do it after so many years of playing. So, I would imagine that choosing the more efficient inversion of F major, namely in this instance, C, F, A, or maybe even an F minor, C, E, G, C, F, A flat, C, E, G. And as you can see in this particular lesson or demonstration I'm not even looking at the piano keyboard because I know my I know that I can trust the piano and my hands to get it right and to not make mistakes you know so shifting becomes a lot easy on the piano if you know your inversions chord shifting and it's important to know that the ability of playing a chord on the piano if I were to tell you in your very first piano class play me F sharp minor you know, if I didn't brand it as a tough chord or a difficult chord and I just said, put one finger on this black note, another finger on that white note and another finger on that black note, you will play it. But then the challenge is if I tell you play F sharp minor and then maybe play a C major. You would know C major also perhaps in class number one, C, E, G, but this is the job. The act of shifting is the actual problem or the actual challenge when it comes to playing chords on not only the piano, I would imagine most instruments. You would be able to get a chord on even a guitar but or a banjo or a ukulele or whatever. But then are you confident to shift from that chord to the next chord in time in a real world environment like a song with a singer, with a drummer and a band on stage perhaps? If that's a challenge, you definitely need to use inversions. So, C, E, G will thus become 
F minor, C, F, A flat. And similarly, if you were to not start on the root position of C major, maybe start from the first inversion. E, G, C, you can still use the appropriate inversion or the most efficient inversion to go to the default F major. And there are a lot of other advantages of doing this. So I'm sure you'll agree with me that you might as well start learning chord inversions at the word go. You, the, the moment you do chords as a piano learner or if you are doing chords, this is what you need to do. You need to bring in the inversions. And I have a few simple strategies. First of all, write down the triad in a neat round circle. So C, E, G... And because of writing it in a neat round circle, you can extrapolate three shapes pretty easily in the closed shape, as we call it, or the piano inversions, which are in the clockwise direction. C, E, G, or E, G, C, or G, C, E. So you'll extrapolate three shapes. And by the way, if you go in the counterclockwise direction, you're going to get, well, we don't call them as piano inversions, but they are very useful for music writing in general, the spread shape. So if you go in the reverse direction, you'll get C, G, E, or E, C, G, or G, E, C. These are called as spread shapes, which I'll come to shortly in the lesson. So first and foremost, shifting becomes very easy between chords and I have done a playlist on chord inversions so if you think about it from the word go if you take if you plant your hand in a certain position C major okay and now maybe close your eyes maybe I can do an F sharp minor F sharp major D seventh E flat major sixth E minor F diminished hmm, maybe F sharp augmented G minor just trying to randomize or jumble this E major, E seventh, C seventh, F seventh, B flat seven flat nine, maybe an E flat minor seventh, maybe an E minor seventh, maybe an E major. Oh, I repeated that. Fair enough. F sharp minor, A flat major, D, G. You can even go around the circle of fifths perhaps with your eyes closed. That'll be a bit easier on the brain. C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat or F sharp. B, E, A, D, G, C. You can also do circle of fifths in the clockwise direction. C, G, D, A, E, B, F sharp, B flat, A flat, E flat, B flat, F, C. And I don't think you can do this with your eyes closed if you were doing just the root positions of the chord, right? So we are made to believe, I guess, with two rather wrong or two or three rather wrong music education systems, if you will. One is notation because when it looks good in notation, it's generally the root position. So people teach that especially to kids when they start, you know, it just looks root-like in nature but it's a horrible way to start your chords because generally speaking when you're learning a topic in life in general you, I'm sure you might agree with me you can let me know in the comments the first grasp of something you do in that subject is going to stick with you you know if it's a language it could be you know the important uh, you know the pronouns or the nouns or the adjectives the important sentences you know that will stick with you for I guess for life uh, so you better have a good teacher or at least a good education system so bring in inversions right from the beginning and uh, the other thing is these keyboards which are sort of auto programmed to do chords if you play those chords in inversions if you don't play them in the root position they kind of give you wrong answers so to speak in this keyboard style of training or sometimes even in apps in recording apps so if if you buy if you're biased towards that then you're not really a keyboard or a piano player you're just a kind of a button pusher so to speak so try to try to kind of focus on it from a two-handed piano perspective where it's just white and black keys so definitely chord inversions will be useful at the very beginning don't delay them in your education journey for later okay there are some other reasons why chord inversions are useful if you were to play a chord with an inversion let's say b flat major in its whatever inversion actually names are not even important you just need to know the three shapes so if i play 
B flat major like this you know for my year or for any human year the top note is generally going to ring the most it's going to be the most prominent or the most catchy for our selves to a point that we can even sing it la see la now i could sing the other notes f in the bottom or b flat in the middle but it's this guy which seems to be sticking out a lot so because of inversions you can bring out the melody line very well in a in a song and it will also equip you as a solo piano player to make music with melody and harmony in one hand we've done a lot of videos on the same where i've used melodic arpeggios it's a very common technique which i use in music you can check out a video in the description but just just to show you lera now i'm just going to sing a tune la see i found a chord and i've planted my pinky my higher finger highest finger on the top note of that inversion and i'm telling myself hey it's f major but with f on the top because that's the melody line and maybe la re re ra and then b flat la ra re da ra ra la ra ra da ra re la ra re ru 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 you know so the topmost note will 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 generally propel the melody line forward and you can put the pieces together of the melody like a jigsaw puzzle so to speak by la ra 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 so i can play those notes and then plant my hand la on the new inversion of the target chord printed in your charts whatever you read la ra 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 le ra ru 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 maybe la what's that that's your landing or the long one la that's your d over b flat la ra 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 re e flat major la ra ra cha ra re ru f sharp on la ra 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 re ru re ru and do this for the simplest of songs anything in your actually you have one hand free on the piano you know so it is worthwhile learning chord inversions in the right hand to bring out the melody line we tend to have a biased approach towards playing the piano wherein chords are played in the left hand melody in the right hand that won't work in a band setting because this will make it very muddy for your guitar player and the other musicians especially the bass instruments in the band So you'd rather make it a bit easy for everyone's ears, cleaner, less muddy by playing chords on the top end, and it'll be the icing on the cake if you can bring in the melody line on the top end. So that's another reason you would definitely need to learn chord inversions. So another reason would be a bit more from a musical composition perspective. That's the voicing. So each voice you play in a given chord. So let's say C major. in root position will have intervallic relationships between each of those notes how many intervals are there you might ask well there are actually three intervals for a three note chord that might seem a bit obvious but trust me it's not very obvious because for a two note chord there you just have one interval for a four note chord you have six intervals so we'll get to that maybe in another video so if you take c major the intervals are C to E major third E to G minor third and C to G perfect fifth so our ear is processing all these three intervals together to get the sound now if you play an inversion it's a very different sounding set of intervals you know because it's E to G minor third first you have a perfect fourth by the way so the first inversion has a perfect fourth and 
you have this rather serious minor sixth so you have a minor third e to g minor sixth at the extreme and a perfect fourth and the same story if you do a g c e again it has a more different flavor i would say this is a more grander inversion a grander sound while this is a more timid sound or a more pensive sound even though a major chord as we learn in books is generally positive so you have a more assertive textbook sound which you hear all the time this is a bit more pensive or a bit more introspective it's thinking while this is a lot more grander why the grand you might ask you have an interval g c which is a perfect fourth g e which is a very grand interval that's a major sixth so very different intervallic relationships between the notes will happen and thus different voicing as we call it and where things get really interesting on the piano or as a composer in general on any instrument or even in a daw software is when you adjust the voices to go beyond the octave so now if i take c major i don't want to press the e here i will press it up the top above the octave some musicians call this a tenth voicing and what's beautiful about it you can help the lower register a lot more harmonically cuz if you played c major in the root position down below absolute mud and chaos sometimes so it's a much better way to play c major or maybe even c minor great for arpeggios There's a lot of pop songs out there which use this technique. So you can open out the lower register in your productions, in your compositions and arrangements by not being scared of whether it'll clash or anything. See, clashing is not a matter of clashing frequencies. It's a matter of clashing intervals in my opinion. And the lower you go, the intervals are too close to each other in terms of yes, pitch and frequency, so they clash and you're not able to make out the intervals clear. early like i said there are three intervals for a triad so to, for you to make them out better spread them out more and they sound beautiful up top too okay so spread voicing versus closed voicing even with closed voicing as you saw you can generate different sonic textures right so i have a couple more reasons why you should use chord inversions and then to cap off the lecture we look at when you should not use chord inversions let's look at actually case studies where you should probably stick with root position so just stay tuned so the other thing i would like to mention is voice leading the fact that it is easy to play it's easy to shift it also is easy to hear So that's the bonus you get on the piano I guess see it's probably the only instrument we have in our musical family where what is easy to play is actually the best so sound sonically guitarists will get very annoyed when they understand this fact because usually on a guitar the best shapes you get are the most tricky to play if you ask me at least so on the piano c to f super easy You can play it with your eyes closed or with a blindfold if you enjoy that approach. And look what's going on here. Very smooth. You can also hear every voice very smoothly and this is also what they call in music as voice leading. So you can hear la da da that 
that's the lower voice. And then... La, da, da, da. As well as the higher voice. La, da, de, la, de, de. And in any inversion. Now you put the common voice there. So it becomes very orchestral. You can literally assign each of these notes or voices to a choir or an orchestra or use different instruments and see how the textures come together. Right? And last but not least, I'd like to look at a use case for chord inversions, a very important use case using slash chords. Now, slash chords will drastically change the energy state of the chord in question. So if I take C major... Generally speaking, the bass note would be C, like so. However, if I play C major with an E bass, even though I have the root position going on here, doesn't sound very stable anymore, does it? Reason being, I would imagine that this is a completely different chord quality. So knowledge of inversions can control the, the mood or the, the energy state of the chord. I feel... This is a tense chord. La, da, it wants to resolve to F. While C major with C bass is just happy. It's at home sitting on a sofa. La, it's quite happy there. But C with E going to F. C over E is highly unstable. Wants to resolve. Similarly, C over G. C slash G as we call it. C, G resolves to the dominant, perhaps the G, and then back to C because dominant wants to go to tonic. So it's ironic that the tonic chord with a different bass resolves to the dominant and the dominant feels more at home, but then that wants to kind of come back here. Similarly, the tonic chord with a third bass, I tend to call it one slash number three, normal three. That helps me to remember because you have the third in the bass. And then, I don't know what the official uh, Roman definition or Roman terminology for slash chords is. So maybe you could leave it, leave it in the comment. If you've learnt it a specific way, I'll be happy to see it. But this is C slash E. I would call this one slash three. No, Roman one slash normal three. That resolves to F. Again, great voice leading, but it's important to know that inversions help with changing the energy state of chords, especially when you propel slash chords with a different bass note in the lower register of your piano or any musical instrument in general. In fact, this whole lesson doesn't pertain only to piano players. You can probably try and check out these techniques with whatever form of work in the music industry you do and let me know if it helped you. I hope it did and these are just standard theoretical concepts. Now to conclude this lesson, is there going to be ever a case where we should say no bye-bye to chord inversions. I guess not after all this, but maybe for a couple of things. For example, if you want to do some left-hand arpeggios and you want to hold down the root note with your pinky, you're almost creating a very rooted voice here. You're making this voice different than the remaining voices. So in the case where your hand is kind of divided into one part and part two, where this is doing the job of a bass player. The, you will then need to think, okay, is the original chords as per the chord chart C major? So you don't want to play that with a E bass because then the flavor will change, the energy will change, right? So especially in the left hand when you're doing arpeggios and when you have the ability to ring out one of the notes, prefer the roots because that will be as per the chart see that is an actual deliberate change because I wanted to play F slash A now normal B flat major G major so in these cases, you would definitely need to consider not doing too many convenient inversions, but focusing more on the 
actual sound that the bass register needs as per the chords printed in your progression okay uh, the another reason would be when you're striding when you're kind of block moving away like for example this is a very standard pattern you hear in so many piano terms right now if you were to invert that now it it kind of makes that very it makes the non root very important so i would say in cases where you're breaking up your chord in cases where you're arpeggiating the chord and creating a left hand pattern with a very important root probably play the chords as they are with the root position instead of inversions but for the most part you have to know inversions as you journey forward as a pianist or as a musician arranger songwriter whatever producer in general so hope you found the lesson useful if you did do leave us a comment hit the like button there's also a share button somewhere there and if you haven't subscribed yet it'll be awesome if you could hit that button nothing will happen to your computer try to hit it right now there's a bell as well and uh, support us on patreon if that works for you cheers and catch you in the next video